Hi everyone, my name is Dimitrios Mirziotis and I will present to you a joint work with Valentin Kabanets, Sajin Korot, Zhenzhan Liu and Igor Oliveira. This paper is about a circuit complexity class that is um, like the Morgan formulas of low communication leaf gates. So about this class, we give some lower bounds, PRT, SAT algorithms, and learning algorithms. But let's see how this class looks like. Okay, so this circuit complexity class that we're going to study, uh, it is called formula, like um, formulas of functions in some function class D. And this is how these devices look like. So on top, there is a formula, which is uh, a circuit of end and OR gates that has tree structure, it's like a tree. Then there is a layer of functions from the class D, and then there is uh, an input layer where the, the input variables are. One instantiation of this function class D is the class of parities. We're going to see some results about this later. And the most important question now is the following, like why is this circuit class important? Apart from the fact that it generalizes its formulas. One instantiation of the importance of the circuit class is the hardness magnification uh, work. One result by Oliveira, Pich, and Santanam is that if there are some mild lower bounds against uh, super linear uh, formulas of parities, then one is able to separate NP from polynomial size formulas, which is like a long standing open problem. And MCSP is uh, a meta computation problem about circuit complexity. Okay, about formulas, our understanding in the literature has stopped around cubic size. For subcubic size formulas, we have PRGs, lower bounds, and so on. For supercubic size, we have nothing. And this inclusion here says that if we want to understand supercubic size formulas, we first need to understand this weak, seemingly weak instantiation of this uh, class of formulas of uh, functions. Uh, so if we instantiate this appropriately, we get this class here. And it is necessary to understand this because uh, before we understand supercubic size formulas because of this inclusion. There are some connections to bipartite formulas, graph complexity, p-space protocols, and so on. Also some other variants of bipartite formulas. Also there are connections to polytopes. Okay, now let me explain a bit here. Like a polytope is an end of linear threshold functions and this is again a particular instantiation of this more generic class. Pseudo-random generators for this model are well motivated because they can be used to uh, approximately compute the volume of these polytopes, and this is important in linear programming. So, like as the title suggests, we are going to focus on classes G of low communication complexity that generalize all of the previous instantiations that we saw, like parities, linear threshold functions, and polynomial threshold functions. The standard setting of communication complexity is as follows. Like you have two parties that they want to compute a function. Each party holds an input, like X and Y. So Alice holds X, Bob holds Y. And they are computationally unbounded. And they can transmit, like they can send each other bits. So the question is that like, how many messages do they need to uh, exchange in order to compute the function F? Here it is L. So, so and, and this is how we denote it, where this protocol is deterministic. 
there is a variant where the protocol is randomized and there like and each party has some access uh, has access to some random bits parity is an easy function to compute in this setting because at most two messages are enough and the idea is that like one of the parties can compute the parity of her input and then send this bit b to the other party and then the other party can compute the parity of the whole input also linear threshold functions are easy somewhat easy for this model like there is this non-trivial um, lower bound and this is by work of nissan okay when we have many parties uh one of the models is the number of on forehead communication setting where as you can see the inputs to its party are visible to everyone but not in the party that holds the input so this is why we call it number of forehead and here the parties use a board to write their computations and again the complexity the, the communication complexity is the number l of these messages that are like that is necessary to compute the function in this setting polynomial threshold functions of bounded degree have non-trivial upper bounds by Nissan and Viola polynomials over zero and one also because in this case uh, every monomial can be computed by some party so they can agree beforehand like they can fix an ordering of all the monomials and then they can agree on which monomials uh, are going to be computed by each party and then each party can can uh, like write on the board the sum of here monomial there is like a variation on this where the inputs are private and this is the number in hand model like i will mention where we're going to use this uh, i think in only one result so yeah i will i will uh, let you know okay our results lower bounds prg sat algorithms and learning algorithms the lower bounds is, are about generalized inner product that as the name suggests it generalizes standard inner product and this is the only thing you need to know right now and these lower bounds are around uh, quadratic and depends on the randomized k party communication complexity of the class g so if this is small then this whole fraction is big bigger and you get a better lower bound so if you have low communication complexity in this sense gate g then you get a good lower bound like close to quadratic avish et al showed that the standard inner product is hard for subquadratic size bipartite formulas in our case we are able to get lower bounds even in the case where we can compute the inner product at the leaves because this function here inner product has small enough randomized communication complexity we also get some lower bounds for some metacomputational problems like mktp and mcsp mktp is like about a time bounded analog of kolmogorov complexity and MCSP is about circuit complexity. The lower bounds that we get are around quadratic. They are the first of their kind for this uh, model, like formulas of functions from some class G. These problems are a bit tricky. They do not seem to be uh, amenable to like standard techniques like uh, one very very common technique is to use local prgs where you have like a prg that outputs strings of low circuit complexity or low kolmogorov complexity and in this case mktp or mcsp act as distinguishers to the prg and this is how we get the lower bound just let me also mention that like our lower bound does not uh, fit in the hardness magnification setting 
because the circuit size parameters for which we get the lower bound are different than the ones that are required by hardness magnification. We also get some PRGs. This is the standard definition that like you have a, a, a function class F, calligraphic F, and a PRG G, just like computes strings that look like random if you give it a small enough or a big enough uh, random seed. So is it difficult to design PRGs for formulas of functions in G? So let's see, like previously, in order to get PRGs for subcubic formulas, people used the hardness of Andres function for, for this model. Uh, in our case, we cannot use this function because it is easy for our model, like uh, linear size formulas with parity gates can compute this. So it is not clear how we can use this function. And just let me say here that like um, this result is uh, by Impagliazzo, Mecca and Zuckerman. Okay. Also, a layer of XORs can complicate things. Like an example is AC0 and AC0 of parities. Like uh, the best known PRT link for AC0 is like polylog n, while in AC0 of parities is around, is almost n. Like uh, it has almost trivial stretch. So we are able to get PRTs for formulas of parties with around quadratic stretch. It's like optimal in the sense that like if you improve that, you also improve the lower bounds for this model. We also get PRGs for the more generic class, um, sorry, like for the case where we have arbitrary functions here that have sufficiently small number in hand k party communication complexity. We have to uh, interesting co uh, corollaries. The first one is about fooling intersections of hull spaces. So here, the dependence on n is around, it's like square root of n. And okay, so previously, if you see like 1.1 and 1.2, these two seed lengths are not good either in the case where m is linear, like in 1.1, if m is linear, then the seed length is trivial. In 1.2, if epsilon is around 1 over n, this is trivial again. But like in our case, we are able to give a good seed length, even if m is linear and epsilon is at most 1 over n. So we kind of give something that it is in a sense better than the previous results when it comes to these two, like to the combination of these two parameters. Also, we give the first PRG for formulas of symmetric gates with again, uh, like um, quartic dependence on S and uh, square root uh, dependence on N. Okay, our last PRG is about formulas of G, of, of functions in some class G, uh, and the seed length depends on the number on forehead randomized communication complexity. So if the number on forehead communication complexity is small enough, then this fraction is big enough and this seed length is small enough. We also have sad algorithms as I mentioned, um, like very standard definitions about sad and top sad, nothing different. So here T is our savings. This is the running time like T to the N minus T and the sub the sub sub algorithm is for formulas of functions in C again, and we are able to relate the savings with the randomized communication complexity, which is like two party. So if this is small, this is big. 
So the savings are big. And again, previously in the, in the literature, there were some connections between CNFSAT and three-party communication complexity of some function, but this result by Protrasco and Williams relies on an unproven conjecture. Uh, Chen and Wang give some uh, com uh, quantum communication complex uh, protocols in approximate counting algorithms, but our result is exact counting. So that's the difference. Um, we also give, okay, so uh, one instantiation of the previous result is when you use a linear threshold functions at the leaves. And we have this, these savings here. And the interesting fact is like um, previously in the literature, we were able to get subset algorithms of constant depth Boolean devices with layers with some finite uh, number of layers of, of LTFs at the bottom. In our case, we have an unbounded depth formula on top. Like previously, this is constant depth. This is one layer, one layer. And also this 1.1 result here is about bounded depth circuits with low degree PTFs. And we also have learning algorithms. Again, like the standard pack learning, like you get random labeled examples from an unknown distribution and you want to output with high probability, good hypothesis for the labeling function. And let's assume for now that we have like, uh, we do not care about noise and so on. And we are able to get a learning algorithm for the case where we have a subquadratic size formula on top and parities at the leaves. And the running time is non-trivial as you can see here. So previously in the literature, like for subquadratic formulas, we were able to get, I mean, uh, like Reinhardt was able to get uh, learning algorithms that scale down as the size scales down. Uh, as you can see here, we don't know if this holds for our case. Um, this is open. Uh, another thing that I want to mention is that there are some connections to cryptography here because this class mod three of parities is assumed like uh, as a working hypothesis in the dark matter, uh, the dark crypto matter paper by these people here. Uh, it is assumed to be able to be able to compute pseudorandom functions. If this is true, this class should not be able to be learned in, in uh, this time, like two to the little o of n. And the reason is that mod three is computable by formulas of size n to the 2.8. So maybe this is a barrier to approach uh, maybe cubic size formulas of parities. Also, this is open for standard formulas, but this is another story. Okay, our techniques. So let's start with PRGs. Like we use a result by Reinhardt that says that like if you have a formula of size F, uh, uh, sorry, of size S, then there is a square root S degree polynomial that point wisely approximates this formula. Now, Tal uses this fact to show that if you have a device from this class here, formulas of functions in G, and this device approximates some function f, then there is another function h from this class here, like parities of functions in g, that non-trivially correlates with f. Okay, so one corollary of, uh, of this fact is that if you want to fool this class formulas of functions in g, it is sufficient to fool this class here, which is like small parities of functions in G. And this is like an immediate um, corollary. Now, a corollary of this result is the following, which is like more or less the same, that says that like if you want to construct a PRG for formulas of functions in G, 
and G has low randomized communication complexity, it is enough to create a PRG for a class of function G of low deterministic communication complexity. And this is true by the slide before and these two observations. The first says that like if you have a small parity of functions in G, then the communication complexity should be small again because uh, like multiplicity uh, so you just like have to take the randomized communication complexity of g and multiply it by t and if it is small enough this is going to be small enough but now this is randomized communication complexity but we can reduce it to deterministic uh, communication comp uh, complexity because randomized protocols are convex combinations of deterministic protocols so this is why we get this reduction so now let's use this. So for our PRG, we just like use this corollary and we use from the literature um, PRGs that full functions in uh, that, that, that full function classes G of low deterministic communication complexity. So that's it. Now let's go to lower bounds. About lower bounds, again, like this is a variation of the previous technique. We have this transfer lemma, which is like an immediate corollary of the main PRG lemma that says that like if you have a function f that correlates with a small formula that has low cost randomized uh, uh, k party protocols for its leaf gates, then this f non-trivially correlates with a function that has low cost deterministic k party protocols. And this is immediate from what we saw earlier. So if you want to get a lower bound, use the contrapositive of the transfer lemma, and you just like plug to this transfer lemma an existing average case lower bound for generalized inner product. So this is how we get our generalized inner product lower bounds. And this result that we invoked is from uh, Babai, Nissan, and Segedi. Now, our SAT algorithms, uh, we use this fact one in gray color to indicate that I have used it before. So I'm not introducing anything new. So it's the approximation by polynomials fact. Okay, so we know by this fact that formulas of functions in G, um, so, okay, so we know by fact one that formulas like uh, can be approximated by polynomials. So we take a device C from this class, formulas of functions in G, and we just like replace the top formula by the polynomial. We then show how to find this polynomial explicitly. And then, uh, right, and then like we replace it, as I said, you, we, um, we get a polynomial C tilde, and then we use like ideas from the SAT literature, like the SAT algorithms literature, that they use fast matrix multiplication to count the ones of sparse polynomials, because this is a sparse polynomial here. And about learning algorithms, we use fact two here again, that says that like, I will just uh, let me repeat it quickly, that like if I have a device from this class formulas of functions in D, and this device approximates some function f, then there is a function h, which is the XOR of at most t function in D, that has non-trivial correlation with this function f. Okay, so now just like note that if this class G is parities, then H is a parity of parities. So H is a parity. So H is a parity that is weakly correlated with F. So we get that from fact two. And then we use an agnostic parity learner from the literature by Kalai, Mansur, and Verbin to get a weak learner for F. And then we just like boost it we boost this weak learner to get a strong park uh, learner. And this by Freud. And maybe the main takeaway of this work is that like if you have a sub quadratic size formula and then like you plug some leaves of low communication complexity, you do not enhance the power by too much, by much, because like we have all these lower bounds and these like circuit analytic algorithms. 
what can we say for this model where the formula part is super quadratic? This is an interesting direction. Uh, we don't know what we can say. For example, can we show any lower bounds for this class? Also, like if you remember in our PRG of half spaces, the dependence on n was like quadratic, sorry, it was like square root of n, but like can we show a PRG where the exponent goes to zero? And the parameter is again at most one over n. And can we give a generic connection between non trivial SAT and K party number on forehead communication protocols? And how about to find a learning algorithm that scales down, like the running time scales down, as the size of the formula part scales down? And uh, we would like to thank Rocco's video for bringing into our attention the KMV paper. We would like to thank Mahdi Chirakchi for various discussions. And of course, the CC reviewers. And this is my email. Like, if you have any comments, if uh, you have like any questions or anything, I will be happy to reply to you. And thank you very much for your time. Uh, thank you.